Blessings YouTube and welcome to Spiritual Vibrations. Today I wanted to talk about um, the spirit. What is the spirit and kind of what it means to be spiritual. If we're going to be talking about uh, spiritual vibrations then we need to at least be on the same page in terms of what I am defining as being the spirit um, and again this is just my definition for the purpose of this spiritual journey here what is the spirit what is the spirit um, I went and searched and from what I could see the word spirit comes from the Latin word spiritus and it means breath um, so the definition uh, of spirit is breath, that which animates the body. Um, it also said that, that it is referred to as consciousness, um, the immaterial part of the of the being, the uh, the part that re that has to do with emotion and your character. It's not something that is visible. It's um, and quite different from the word soul. Some people think that the words spirit and soul are interchangeable, but I guess it really all depends on which religious sect you follow. Um, but from what I gathered and from what I understand of it, they, um, they are very similar, but not quite the same. Because sometimes when you say a soul, which comes from the Latin word anima, um, which also, when it when I research research, it still comes from the uh, Latin word "espiritu," which means breath. So again, it's that which animates the body. And um, but when we use the word "soul," sometimes people say, "Well, not a soul raised their hand, or not a soul came to the event." But no one will say, you know, not a spirit came, because anytime you hear spirit, we understand it's like universally understood that spirit is that which is not um, visible. Um, either we refer to a spirit as someone who has passed on um, from their physical self and then their spirit inhabits, you know, still inhabits the earth, it's still around and uh, because those feelings and all those things are so strong. And also sometimes spirit is referred to um, to your own personal spirit. You'll, a lot of time you'll hear people say, oh, I couldn't go because my spirit didn't let me, or um, my spirit didn't feel good about her, or oh, my spirit knew them right away, things like that. And the other thing about spirit is that it's infinite. They say that a spirit can never be destroyed but a spirit can be broken and, and we all have probably experienced that at some point in time where someone just broke our spirits with their negativity or their actions or uh, it might have been even no action or, or just you know ignoring whatever it is. Spirits can be broken but they cannot be destroyed. And because of that, I feel that, um, and this is gonna sound funny, but then again, I'm a funny person. I feel that our spirits kind of uh, bounce through time and bounce through bodies, bounce through objects. I mean, I would hate to, to think that everything that I feel and everything that I've learned and um, even some things that I feel like I've learned in a different time is just going to cease to exist when this body, um, as much as I take care of it, ceases to exist. And, and because of that, when I have lost people, you know, when, I don't want to say lost them, when uh, family members have um, shed their physical bodies, I still look for their spirit. And um, there have been plenty of times when I, when I felt it. Um, I can't really say I've seen it. I've seen weird things, but um, I more or less felt their spirit. And I know that it was their spirit because it was so reminiscent of how I felt when I was around them when they were alive. And in the same token, um, there are people that are alive 
that um, my spirit feels an automatic affinity to. And it's almost like, you know, we're, we're long lost family members or long lost lovers, whatever it is, we, we have that connection. And um, I had a friend say it to me, um, well, she's a new friend, uh, the other day that, you know, that our spirits must have been friends in a previous time. And I can, I can definitely get with that. Although spirit is used to, um, to connotate sort of a, a singular existence or a singular essence, it's actually something that is singularly connected to everything. Sort of like, um, I don't know, when I ever, whenever I think of my spirit, I kind of think of the Borg on, uh, on Star Trek, how it was just like supposed to be one, one main mind that controlled all the other minds and uh, they were all connected, but, that, but yet they were all individual. So it, it's kind of like that. that. That would probably be the, the most extreme uh, personification of it, but um, that's, that's kind of what I feel like the spirit is. So that we each have our own individual spirit that is also connected to the greater spirit. Um, some religions refer to that greater spirit as God. And um, to me, whatever it is that you call it, it doesn't even matter so long as you acknowledge and are aware of it. And that is sort of the, um, the process to me of spirituality. I believe that, um, you know, first we, we have that breath. The spirit is always there, but we're not uh, really in tune or aware of it. Some people get aware of their spirit very early and they begin to take care of their bodies and, and, and through taking care of their bodies and being aware of their own individual spirit, it uh, prompts them to look for the spirit in others. Because you know, the moment that you acknowledge that you have a spirit, you have to say to yourself, well, does that have a spirit? And what about that? Does that have a spirit? Well, what about him? Does he have a spirit? And what about her? Does she have a spirit? And there's where you start the process of the spirit elevating um, to a higher frequency. And um, some people, like I said, depending on which religion you belong to, they believe that that elevation is only made if you follow you know, their traditions, their rituals, and, and their doctrines, and, and you know, their leaders. But to me, I feel like that process, that elevation, that enlightenment, can be achieved um, without the religious groups, but not necessarily singularly by myself. So that I could have my individual spirit, but yet in order for me to be so aware of my individual spirit, I have to also be aware that I am one spirit in a ocean, like an infinite ocean of many, many spirits. And therefore, while I am one singular spirit, I am of the collective spirit. And because I am aware of my individual spirit, I'm almost uh, obligated to seek out and care for the spirits that are near me as well, because they affect. Just as I give off a vibration, um, they give off a vibration as well. It's just like um, they say with music. If you have a, a room full of guitars, let's say we're all these guitars, every, everybody is a guitar and we're all in a room and one person comes in and strikes a note on one guitar, all of the other guitars are gonna hum that same note. We're all gonna resonate and vibrate together because we're all there together. We're all spiritual there together. So it's important to, um, to be aware of your spirit and how it feels so that you are vibrating the right way. I think that the medium has kind of capitalized on this kind of collective spirit um, uh, principle with, uh, with the way that they promote things and uh, the way that they package things and try to sell things and control things, so to speak. So that um, with, it, you know, and it goes way back to, I guess, the colonialism, I guess. Um, I don't want to talk too much about history and, and get off the track, but to, you know, in my mind, that's how far back I can go to 
where they came and they were like, okay, it's not like your way anymore. It's like this. And, and still in all the, the journey, the process has always remained the same. It's just, it's just who felt that they could capitalize on it. And to me, the spirit is so great and so infinite and so omnipotent that no one has the right to say, you can uh, be part of the process. You can't be part of the process. If you don't use our books, if you don't follow our rituals, you can't be part of that process of spiritual enlightenment. Only we can, we're the ones. And no one has that right to do that because we're all connected. Um, and so back to the guitars, if you go in and you strike the wrong note, instead of the melody being like this, it's more like uh, 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 uh. So it's important to have the right type of spirits around you because one negative spirit can affect many. It's uh, it, because we're so deeply rooted and connected. Even if they don't want to acknowledge the connection, we are connected. And that's why if a negative person walks into a room, and they're feeling grumpy and they come in there and they're yelling and screaming and carrying on. Everybody's gonna get on a defense and no one's gonna really feel happy. And the reverse is true too. Whereas if I were to walk into a room and I'm laughing and smiling, it's infectious the same way and everyone's gonna wanna start smiling and laughing with me. They don't even care what I'm smiling and laughing about because it just, it feels good. And so we have to be careful with our spirits. And for me, that is what I, define as a spiritual vibration that which i give off with my spirit my my emotion my essence not the outside that has a lot to do with it but the outside is what houses my spirit it's it's almost a representation of my spirit and so because i am aware of what my spirit is i am careful in how i represent it with my physical and with my food my nutrition with my words, with my mannerisms. Some people call that, um, you know, godliness. Um, I just call it being spiritual and being aware of who I am and who I am in the world. If someone were to ask me um, what my definition of a spiritual vibration was, I would tell them that a spiritual vibration is, uh, is laughter, a uh, sense of humor, uh, helping, caring, sharing, forgiveness, um, honoring life, um, seeking the truth, uh, any of those things I consider to be spiritual. And when you engage in any of those, you're sending out a spiritual vibration. And so with spiritual vibrations, that is what I seek to do, to um, vibrate to the world you know, and I say vibrate to the world, a positive, harmonious vibration, not one that's like, mm, 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 that doesn't fit and causes everybody to be like, mm, 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 mm. but I, I aim to send out a vibration that is harmonious with all the other vibrations. And I seek to connect with all the vibrations. And that's a part of the the, the journey of spiritual enlightenment. And so that's really it. I will be talking more about it as we go along. This is only the second um, part of the series, Spiritual Vibrations. And I just kind of wanted to give a little um, background on where I stand with spirit. So thank you again for watching. If you've liked my videos, please like it. Um, be sure to subscribe to my channel and share, by all means share. And thank you again. Blessings.